This meeting promises to be different. I know Alan talked about it different uh, in terms of what the differences will be. I hope it will be different in its purpose and its structure. Sometime back in March, March 1st, my colleagues and I, we passed a motion introduced by me and a couple of other colleagues and asked the city manager to hold quarterly meetings in the community to discuss ways that residents can become much more involved in making Long Beach a more livable, mobile, and desirable place to live. We certainly feel that in our hearts that this is this place is all those things, but certainly I think we can always do better. We've made considerable progress throughout the city. I, I know it's visible over the last five years to implement a very bold vision that would propel the city to the forefront of urban cycling. We've done that, but we've really we've only done that because you've taken that to the top of my agenda and to the top of the agenda of, of my colleagues. You've seen projects such as the Green Sharrows, you have them here on campus, but to see them out in the street in the city of Long Beach is really quite remarkable. Citywide wayfinding signage, bike racks, bike boulevards, bike corrals, and the most recent development, separated bike lanes. And I have to tell you, even though it's not officially open yet, People are writing them, and um, it's encouraging. But you've seen all these things, but more than bricks and mortar, really much more than bricks and mortar, I hope to encourage discussions of new policies, programs, and initiatives that will promote an overall agenda of active living, where bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure can support redevelopment and revitalization of neighborhoods. I heard something Tuesday uh, during an event to celebrate organ donation and the campaign that the city's part of, and one gentleman who's a 16-year heart recipient has a bike lane going through his neighborhood, and he said, I really feel as though my neighborhood has been given back to me. Whereas in the past, that particular street has felt like really a freeway, a thoroughfare, people don't pause, people don't stop, it's just people are driving through, and it's a restoration of neighborhoods. And that was very encouraging. While I felt that personally, it was very encouraging to hear that from a resident. And I think that is a, a strong response to give to individuals when people ask, why would you spend so much money on this kind of infrastructure? And really it's because as evolved of an urban center as we can become, when you lose your sense of neighborhood, then there's no purpose. It's not a place you want to live in. This is a place you and I can want to continue to live in. And so this restoration of neighborhood, I think, is the strongest message that I have coming from the city as to why we would do this. There's the active <coughs> lifestyle and all of the other reasonings, but the restoration of neighborhood is so inclusive of people of all ages and, and really um, of all orientation when it comes to what they want from their city. Within this framework, I want to... I certainly want us as a community to discuss what members of the community can do to make a difference through their partnership with institutions and agencies such as Cal State, the port, or the city. 